OpenAI just rolled out GPT Image 1.5 inside ChatGPT, and at first glance it looks like a familiar kind of update. Better prompt accuracy, cleaner edits, faster image generation, stuff we've heard before. But once you actually dig into what changed under the hood, it becomes obvious this isn't a surface level improvement. This is a foundational shift in how image generation behaves. The biggest change shows up the moment you start editing images instead of generating one-offs. GPT Image 1.5 follows instructions with a level of precision that simply wasn't there before. When you ask for a specific change, the model applies that change and leaves everything else alone. Lighting stays stable, the composition holds, faces stay recognizable. Even after several rounds of edits, the image doesn't slowly drift into something else. The identity of people, objects, and the overall scene remains intact. Anyone who has tried using earlier image models for real work knows why this matters. You'd make one edit and it looked fine. The second edit would slightly warp a face. The third would break the background. After that, the only option was starting over. That wasn't a creative limitation, it was a structural one. The new model fixes that at the system level. OpenAI is very explicit about this. The model now changes what you ask for while preserving lighting, composition, and appearance across edits. That single improvement turns image generation from something experimental into something you can actually rely on. Speed plays a big role here too. Image generation now runs up to four times faster. And more importantly, you don't get blocked while waiting. You can keep generating and iterating while other images are still processing. That sounds small on paper, but in practice, it completely changes how creative work feels. You stay in flow, you try ideas back to back instead of waiting, stopping, and restarting. The new images experience inside ChatGPT is clearly designed to support that kind of workflow. There's now a dedicated images section in the sidebar, both on the web and mobile, built specifically for visual exploration. The interface is cleaner, editing is more intuitive, and there are preset styles and trending prompts for people who don't want to write detailed instructions every time. You can still be precise with text prompts, but you also have quick entry points that make experimentation feel effortless. Now, editing itself has taken a big leap forward. The model handles adding elements, removing elements, blending concepts together, and shifting styles without breaking the image apart. You can combine multiple inputs into one scene, then selectively restyle individual parts without collapsing the rest. OpenAI shows an example where people and a dog are merged into a retro film style photo, chaotic kids are added in the background, one person is transformed into a hand-drawn anime style, while everything else stays realistic, and then the people are removed entirely while the environment stays consistent. That kind of edit chain used to be exactly where image models failed. Here, it holds together cleanly. Creative transformations go far beyond simple filters. Image 1.5 can restructure layouts, integrate text naturally into images, and generate designs that look intentional instead of assembled from parts. Movie posters, fashion ads, ornaments, character designs, drink ads, and stylized paintings all come out cohesive, with the original identity preserved. This is where the model starts overlapping with tools like Photoshop, Canva, and Figma. It doesn't replace them, but it works as a generative front end that gets you most of the way there instantly. Before we jump deeper into the story, there's something I keep seeing in the comments. People asking how we manage to produce so much content so fast. Look, in 2025 alone, this channel pulled in 32 million views. That's not luck. That's not grinding harder. It's because every time a new AI breakthrough drops, we plug it straight into our workflow. Most people watch AI news and move on. We use it immediately. So we decided to release something we've never shared before. The 2026 AI Playbook. 1,000 prompts to dominate the AI era. This is how you go from just consuming AI content to actually using AI to build real, unfair advantages for yourself. Get your proposals done in 20 minutes instead of four hours. Launch that side business you keep putting off. Become the person in your company who gets twice as much done in half the time. Founding member access opens soon. Join the waitlist in the description. All right, back to the video. Text rendering is another area where things move forward in a meaningful way. Dense text, small text, structured layouts, and even markdown rendered as a realistic newspaper now work far more reliably. That matters for infographics, posters, documentation visuals, UI mockups, and marketing assets. Earlier image models struggled badly with readable text. The new model still has limits, but the output quality is now high enough that the results are usable rather than just illustrative. OpenAI is also very clear about where the model still falls short. 
They reran many examples from the original image launch and saw clear gains, though not perfection. Scientific illustrations can still include inaccuracies. Multilingual text remains uneven. Certain styles can break under tight constraints. Handling many faces in a single image has improved but still presents edge cases. The important part is that these are now edge cases, not the default experience. The API side of this release is just as important. GPT Image 1.5 is available to developers with the same improvements, and image inputs and outputs are around 20% cheaper than before. That pricing shift is deliberate. It pushes image generation into high volume commercial use. Creative platforms like Wix, Canva, Envato, Higgsfield, and Figma Weave are already integrating it. Wix specifically pointed out the consistency in lighting, composition, and fine detail as the reason the model fits real production workflows rather than just concept work. All right, now, alongside this image model launch, OpenAI has been reshaping how it operates as a company. Its relationship with Microsoft was restructured in late October, lifting exclusivity limits and allowing OpenAI to sign infrastructure deals with other providers. Shortly after that, OpenAI committed to spending about $38 billion over seven years renting servers from Amazon. On top of that, Amazon is now in talks to invest more than $10 billion directly into OpenAI, a deal that could push OpenAI's valuation past $500 billion. That potential agreement includes OpenAI using Amazon's Trainium AI chips and expanding its data center footprint. It stacks on top of an already massive set of long-term infrastructure commitments. OpenAI has secured roughly $1.5 trillion in long-term deals with NVIDIA, Oracle, AMD, and Broadcom for chips and computing capacity. NVIDIA alone has committed up to $100 billion in a multi-year arrangement that involves OpenAI purchasing millions of AI processors. Some investors have raised concerns about how intertwined these deals are, with infrastructure suppliers also becoming investors. From OpenAI's perspective, the priority is securing compute at planetary scale. Models like GPT 5.2, Advanced image systems, long-running agents, and multimodal tools all depend on predictable, enormous compute supply. GPT Image 1.5 itself is relatively lightweight compared to frontier reasoning models, but when millions of users generate images continuously, throughput and cost become critical. Amazon already backs Anthropic with around $8 billion and supplies chips for training its models. Bringing OpenAI deeper into that ecosystem would be a major win for Amazon's custom chip division. The deal reportedly doesn't grant Amazon rights to resell OpenAI's most advanced closed weight models, which Microsoft controls until the early 2030 seconds, but it does deepen Amazon's position in the AI infrastructure stack. There's also a clear commercial layer beyond compute. Amazon and OpenAI are discussing e-commerce integrations building on OpenAI's existing partnerships with Shopify, Etsy, and Instacart. Image generation fits naturally into that strategy. Product imagery, branded visuals, and storefront assets generated and iterated in real time align perfectly with what GPT Image 1.5 now does well. On the research side, OpenAI is also being unusually transparent about the limits of its models. The release of the Frontier Science Benchmark reflects that. It evaluates scientific reasoning across physics, chemistry, and biology using doctoral-level problems, separating clean competition-style questions from open-ended research tasks. There are more than 700 questions in total, including a curated gold set designed to resist data contamination. The results tell an important story. GPT 5.2 performs extremely well on competition-style questions, scoring around 77% and narrowly edging out Gemini 3 Pro. On research-style tasks, performance drops to around 25%. That gap highlights the difference between solving structured problems and doing real scientific research. OpenAI frames scientific work as iterative trial and error, involving hypothesis building, verification, and revision across disciplines. Current models accelerate research by helping with literature review, translation, and proof assistance, while deep open-ended reasoning under uncertainty remains challenging. That context matters for image generation too. OpenAI is drawing a clear line between tools that amplify human workflows and claims of autonomous intelligence. GPT Image 1.5 dramatically speeds up creative work while remaining guided by human intent. Frontier Science applies the same philosophy to research. 
These systems increase productivity without pretending to replace expertise. Personnel move support that direction. OpenAI hired former UK Treasury head George Osborne to work on AI infrastructure collaboration with governments through the Stargate project. That points to long-term planning around national deployment, regulation, and localization. Visual tools and multimodal systems matter here because they shape how AI shows up in everyday life, not just inside labs. One final detail ties this all together. The image model launch was accelerated. Reports suggest GPT Image 1.5 was originally planned for early January, but OpenAI pushed it out in mid-December. That timing lines up with competitive pressure from Google's Gemini 3 and Nano Banana Pro image systems. Sam Altman previously described the situation as a code red, and this release feels like a direct response. Fiji Simo, OpenAI's CEO of applications, summed up the shift clearly by saying that when visuals tell a story better than words, ChatGPT should use visuals. All right, let me know what you think in the comments. If you found this useful, drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.